Okay, let's review what we were doing yesterday and then let's get into some new stuff. So yesterday we were looking at these sinusoidal functions, which you might think sine, sine, I mean, you see the letters, but a sinusoidal function can be defined using either sines or cosines. And the good news is that the various properties of sinusoidal functions, like amplitude and period and so on, those are the same whether you're using a sine or a cosine. So we don't have to memorize different things for different sinusoidal functions. We introduced the amplitude. And the amplitude is half of the distance between a function's maximum and minimum. Alternatively, if you think of having a midpoint line, cutting the function in two, the amplitude will be that distance between the midpoint and the maximum, or for that matter, the distance between the midpoint and the minimum. And the amplitude, you can read right off of the function. The amplitude is the absolute value of A. We then talked about D, which I tend to think of as a vertical shift, but maybe another way you could think of it would be the distance from the x-axis to the midline. So if you have a sinusoidal function, when we were talking about period just a little while ago, we said, well, we can think of the amplitude as being the distance between the maximum or the minimum of the function and this midline. And if the x-axis is there, this vertical shift is going to be the distance between the x-axis and that midline. And this distance is going to be a D. I'll put D in absolute value because if D is negative, that can happen. If D is negative, that means the graph is pushed downwards. We can't have a negative um, distance though. So if we're defining D as being a distance, we need an absolute value sign around it. Finally, I think we got to the period. 
The period is the amount of time it takes a graph to start repeating itself. And if you have this graph, the easiest way to think of the period is going to be as the distance between the maximum values or alternatively, the distance between the minimum values. And the period is defined in a kind of weird way. Yeah. The period is defined in terms of B, yeah? but unlike the amplitude and the shift, where the amplitude's just A and the shift is just D, the period has a formula for it. The period is 2 pi divided by B. Um, one implication of this formula is that B being big actually causes the period to be small. So it maybe works the opposite of what it seems like it should work. And that leaves us with what? Well, we've talked about what A and B and D do. So what remains is to talk about what C does. C contributes to what is called the phase shift. And, you know, giving it its own name, the phase shift makes it sound very, uh, very fancy. But this is just the horizontal equivalent of the horizontal, of the vertical shift. We've got that D either pushing the graph up or pulling it down. And we have C, which is either pushing the graph right or pushing the graph left. The phase shift is actually the most complicating of the properties. I mean, I'm not claiming it's super complicated, but it's the only property that a sinusoidal graph has that isn't determined entirely by one of the constants. The phase shift is partially determined by C, but it's also determined by B. So if we have a sine or a cosine, and we want to shift it to the left or to the right, the amount that it shifts left or right is going to be C divided by B. And I don't know, you know, how, how recently any of you took any kind of algebra class or how, uh, how well this is sort of fixed in your mind. If you have a sinusoidal function, you could rewrite it. like that. And from algebra, you might remember subtraction inside parentheses causes a horizontal shift. So that's why it's C divided by B. 
need it. But if this doesn't mean much to you or you find it difficult to make heads or tails of, you don't have to. You can always just memorize this. So, what I'm going to write on the board is true, but can be a little confusing. If B is positive, the shift is going to be to the right. If B is negative, the shift is going to be to the left. The reason I say this is maybe a little confusing is that sinusoidal functions have a negative sign built into them. Like y is two times the cosine of five x minus seven plus two. Let's take a look at this, and let's just think of the phase shift. So we've got A and B and C and D. So the phase shift is going to be seven fifths. And it's going to be seven fifths to the right. And an easy mistake to make would be to see that negative sign in front of the wait. Sorry, Let's see what I get for trying to write this without having an example in front of me, it's that C, the sign of the C that's controlling the direction of the phase shift. And what I was saying is you might see this negative sign and think, okay, it's a negative number according to what we have written here, a negative number means we're going left. But the negative sign is built in to the sinusoidal function. We're subtracting positive seven. So positive seven is positive and we're going to the right. So that's, since I have it on the board, Let's take a look at y equals two times the cosine of five x minus seven plus two. And although the march of technology is making, you know, graphing stuff by hand, maybe an increasingly obsolete talent, let's see if we can figure out what this graph should look. We'll draw just one period of the graph, because if we can draw one period, the rest of the graph is just going to be that period repeated over and over again. So traditionally, the specific period we'll draw is this one, and we'll see what happens to this period. So we're going from zero to two pi, 
we reach a maximum value of one and a minimum value of negative one. Our minimum occurs halfway between the period. Our roots occur a fourth of the way through the period. And three fourths of the way through the period. And now we'll just take each of these in turn. What does this two do? Well, this two adjusts the amplitude. So maybe I should have left myself a little more space. But instead of going up to one and down to negative one, This graph should go up to two and down to negative two. And here I re now I really do need some more space. So I'm going to copy this over here. So that I can erase that. Let's unclutter this graph a little. So that's what that two in front is doing. That adjusts the amplitude. And now we'll I will change something else. And the th thing about this is that it, the order doesn't matter. We can adjust the period, we can adjust the phase shift, we can adjust the vertical shift. It really doesn't matter. Uh, let's take this and let's adjust the period. The period is currently a two, um, two pi, I mean to say. That B causes the period to shrink. Instead of two pi, the period is now two pi divided by five. And that may, I mean, this isn't going to be perfectly to scale, but let me try to get some idea. Two pi divided by five is about one compared to two pi which is about six. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty significant contraction. So we've really contracted the graph so that its period is two pi over five. The wonders of the whiteboard doing this pen and paper is a lot messier because you can't just press a button and delete stuff. Um, This plus two should take everything and move it up by two units. So 
instead of going down to negative two and up to positive two, it should go down to zero and up to four. giving us a graph that looks something like that. And now this period will move horizontally by a kind of weird amount by five divided by seven. So, Gosh, this is going from about zero to one. So if everything moves to the left, five divided by seven is a little less than one. So maybe our new period should be something like from here to there. Again, not a great work of art, but I mean, if you are trying to do this by hand, that's how it's done. You just take the original curve and you adjust it piece by piece. The precise order doesn't matter, but I did do this in the order that I thought was probably the easiest, which is to first adjust the amplitude and the period, and then to grab the curve and move it around the plane, vertically and horizontally. Yeah. The, the horizontal shift is your B over your C, but it's the absolute value of it? Um, that's correct. Here, B is positive five, C, oops, didn't mean to erase. Um, remember that because the negative sign is built into the sinusoidal function, C here is positive seven, so you didn't need the absolute value, but Yes, if you um if you had a negative number, especially if you had a negative B, for example, you'd throw it in the absolute value. So let's see. I may not have created a beautiful artwork, but hopefully. We've at least got something that we can recognize if we go to Desmos and compare. So to the cosine of five X minus seven plus two. Hmm. Close those parentheses. Yeah, and I mean, obviously it's difficult to see the details, but compared to the cosine, I mean, originally a period went from here to here, now a period's going from here to here. So you see we did significantly contract the period. We shifted it up the right amount. This is, this is something that is clearly visible in this picture, that it ought to come down to the origin and stop there. And that's what we're seeing here. And the, um, the specific period we drew was the period from that to that, from 0.143,
1.4 osmosis rounding, of course. It's not giving us multiples of pi. And yeah, this looks pretty much like what we drew on the white. What we'd like to be able to do sometimes. Well, are there any questions about this? What we'd like to be able to do sometimes is go the other way. I mean, if we generate, a, if we have a graph, it's given to us, we see, oh, this looks sinusoidal. Um, but we don't have an equation for the graph. Well, can we get an equation for the graph? And I'm going to, well, cheat's the wrong word, but I'm going to use Desmos to create a graph for us. And then, I'm going to hide that. And we're going to see if we can create this, um, an equation that gives us this graph. And I'm going to say right away that the equation we create might not be this equation because sines and cosines look the same and because sines and cosines are periodic there's always going to be multiple ways to create the same graph. So to start with, I'm going to jot down some features of the graph. I might want a calculator, although all the math's gonna be simple enough that I could really just have Google would do it, but um, let's start by getting the amplitude. So the maximum value of this graph is seven. The minimum value of this graph is three. So what should the amplitude the two of this graph be. Two. I hear two uh, kind of quietly, but that's correct. You could have been a uh, border. So the distance between the maximum at seven and the minimum at three is four. The amplitude is half that distance. So the amplitude occasionally, there we go, Zoom does this thing where there's suddenly this huge input delay. And the amplitude is the absolute value of A. So going back to what I said earlier about there always being more than one way of doing this, there are two values of A we could pick that would give us the amplitude we want. I, unless I have some compelling reason to want a to be negative, I'll probably just pick the positive value and say that A should be positive. And notice that at this point, I haven't even made a determination if I'm going to use the cosine or the sine function because things like amplitude are the same. We don't need to make that determination at this point. The period is the distance between two successive peaks. So probably in reality, the period is some fraction of 
I, but going from Desmos, well, to find a distance, we subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. So 3.285 minus 1.19. The period is 2.095. See what and now in terms of A, B, C, and D. The period is 2 pi divided by b. So this is a little more of a hassle than the amplitude. We have to solve for b. 2.095 times b equals 2 pi b equals 2 pi divided by 2.095. And at this point, we've already got some kind of rounding error. I mean, the period isn't exactly that. So yeah, I see you've got your calculator. Can you give this to me as a fraction or a decimal? Decimal was 2.999. 2.999. Let's round that to three. It probably is three, making um considering that we had a little rounding error when we found the period using decimals. And again, we could um we could be cute about this. Properly speaking, there's an absolute value there. We could make this be a negative, but I don't know what the advantage of that would be. Let's find B. A, B, C, and D, we can figure out before we've even decided whether we're using a cosine or a sine. Um, A, B, and D is what I meant to say there. For the phase shift, we'll need to make a determination, but let's find D, the vertical shift. Okay, so the minimum is three. The maximum is seven. D is the midway point between the minimum and the maximum. So D is five. That's the average of the maximum and the minimum if anyone is having trouble seeing where it comes from. So y equals two times something, the cosine or the sine, times three x, minus something plus five. And again, Desmos is gonna kind of give away what I used to create the graph when we look at this, but 
let's try to pretend that we don't see this. And let's look at that. And let's look at the cosine. So these are the sines and the cosines if we don't have the C term without any phase shift. Um, and you see, I mean, these graphs look the same. They have the same amplitudes, the same periods, the same vertical shift. We want for them to look like, like that. Let me make the, our target real thick so that it's easy to see. And you see, all we have to do is select an appropriate phase shift. I mean, if we're using the sign, we can start here and move a little to the right and wind up here. Or we could start here and move way to the left and wind up here, or we could start here and move way to the right and end up here. I mean, probably we want to do as little motion as possible. So the best thing to do would be to like start here and move a little to the right. If that's the cosine, if we have the sign, again, we can just take this graph and move it a little to the right. I mean, the only difference is that because the sine and the cosine have their peaks in different places, the amount we have to move it is going to depend. So let's be contrary. Um, because we can see that I used the sign to generate this curve. Let's use the cosine instead. Let's take this curve and let's try to add a little horizontal shift to make it look like that. So the phase shift is three divided by C. C could be negative or C could be positive if C's positive, we're going to be taking this and shifting it right. If C is negative, we're going to be taking this and shifting it left. Either one works, um, but let's, okay, this is my target. Let's shift to the right. So let's shift it so that this peak goes here, this peak goes here, and so on. How much do we need to shift? Well, if we want that peak to go there, we want to shift from negative 1.428 to negative 0.904. And again, I'm sure, sure, I mean, it's definitely true that this negative 1.428 and this negative 0.904 are fractions of pi, and we could get exactly the amount of shift we need, but, but I'm just going to, I lost it. 
to do the subtraction. Or maybe it would be nicer to subtract positive numbers. Positive 1.19 minus 0. 0.66 minus the Not color blind, but somehow stuff's running together. Let's make this curve purple. And I have no idea where that negative two came from. Here's what we have so far, the two, the three, and the five. So let's take this curve um, and let's move it to the right. And in fact, now that that strange minus two that I didn't want is gone. Um, it should be really clear how much we want to move it. We want from this, we want this peak at zero to slide over to this peak at 1.19. A horizontal shift of 1.19 ought to do it. So we're gonna make everything positive. So we won't worry about the absolute values. We want a phase shift of 1.19. Just like with the period, we have to solve for C. Can you plug that in real quick? Two point five two one. Oh, let's see if in the final analysis we've managed to do what we want to do. Not even close, huh? Okay. It's definitely an error with the phase shift. Oh. Sometimes. Sometimes I do find it easy to get kind of lost in the fractions here. Let's hope this works better. Can you do that? Yeah, 3.57. 3. 3.57. 
whether you use the sine or the cosine is only ever going to affect this phase shift instead of 3.57 or rather instead of two, we had 3.57. Okay, so Thursday, we'll keep this up. Um, Thursday, we'll look at situations where we have data like the height of a Ferris wheel or the height of a tide or something like that. And we're trying to go from data to a graph and an equation. I mean, Friday. So I will see you then.